The reason that in Hose, for example, we use the method we can call the traditional method. And what is the traditional method? In traditional method, we see in the second paragraph that studying the Arabic language will usually consist of four things. First is grammar or nahab. Second is syntax or morphology, which is sarf. Third is uh, rhetoric, which is balaga. And fourth is vocabulary building. So three things here is very important. An nahab, al-sarf, al-balaga. In Hose, you have to learn all these three parts of Arabic language. What is Nahb? When we talk about Nahb, Nahb is a grammar of Arabic, or in modern uh, term, we can say the grammar of language, any kind of grammar of language that you evaluate and you understand and you study the changes and the different uh, types and different uh, shapes and forms of words you call grammar. Grammar, in English we have grammar, the structure of sentences, the relation between words we call grammar. So the first thing that we do in Arabic language, in Nahw, we say we divide a word or kalama into three parts. So we say kalama in Arabic or word divides into three parts or three categories. One category is esm, noun. One category is fa'l, verb. One category is harf, particle. So this is the first thing that we understand and we study in nahw, in grammar, in Arabic. Fa'l, esm, and harf. Noun, verb, and particle. So, nahb in Arabic language, any books or any text that you find in Arabic language or in grammar or in nahb, they divide the book into three, say, three parts. One part is about noun, esm, one part is about fa'l or verb, and one part is about harf, part. For example, what is esm? Esm, any kind of noun, any kind of noun. Book is a noun. Going is a noun. Hassan is a noun. Any kind of noun comes to this part, will be under this category. So, esm is a wide word, is a wide topic for any kind of noun which does not belong to uh, uh, any kind of, uh, for example, uh, time, zaman. If it uh, includes a kind of zaman or time, it becomes verb, fa'il. But if you eliminate time from that word, it becomes noun. So, esm. And then we have fa'l or verb, which is the second part of uh, Arabic uh, language or Arabic uh, grammar or nahw. And finally, it is harf. Harf, for example, fi, men, ila, ala. There are tens of huruf, we call huruf, that each one has its own structure, meaning, and even more than this, the position of a harf in a sentence differs. For example, if you have a sentence and you use ala, you have different kinds of position for ala in Arabic language. So we learn all these things under the title, the general title, kalama or word, which is divided into three parts. Okay, could you please read the Nahf uh, paragraph. Nahf. 
What is now? Fairly, yes. And three. Very good. Okay. One important thing that you can find in Arabic, not in maybe in any other language, is about the cases, about the harakah. We have three kinds of cases in Arabic. Marfu' Maksur Majru uh, sorry. Majrur Mansub. For example, when you have a word of kitab. You have three cases for kitab in a sentence. Sometimes kitab is marfu, so you say kitabu. Kitabu here is marfu. We call here marfu. Sometimes it is majrur. We say kitabi. Sometimes it is mansub, kitabe. Okay. So to understand and to study that in what cases a word, a noun, becomes marfu'. There are many cases, there are many uh, different things that will happen that a word in a sentence becomes marfu'. For example, if a word in a sentence is a subject, is a fa'il, it should be marfu'. So if a word in a sentence is a subject. For example, I say Aliyun Ja'a. Ja'a means came. Is verb. Aliyun is subject, is fa'il. So all the times, fa'il is marfu'. So we have a general sentence that kullu fa'ilin marfu'. Kullu fa'ilin marfu'. So in this case, we understand that marfu' And this all comes when a word is a subject, is a file. What about majroor? Majroor, when a word, a noun, comes after a particle, comes after a harf, it becomes majroor. For example, fi kitabe. Fi, whatever comes after harf, after particle, it becomes majroor. Or ala kitabi. Or le kitabi. So in any sentence, when you have a noun which comes after particle, after harf, it becomes majroor. What about mansub or nasb? When does a word become mansub? Mansub is the position of object when some, uh, something is object, is maf'ul. When something in a, some word or noun in a sentence becomes maf'ul or object, it becomes mansub. So, kullu fa'ilin marfu' kullu maf'ulin mansub wa kullu harfin ba'd al-jar majroor. So, for example, hada Fi kitabin. Kitab after fi becomes majroor. Kitabu aliyin hasanun. Kitab is a subject here. Ra'aytu ra'aytu kitaba aliyin. Kitaba here is maf'ul or object so it becomes mansub. Any question?